Greetings and good evening. It's the Chevy Nova 73 74 Nova Show. I'm your admin, Dave Meyer, one of the admins. And if my camera would quit doing that, that'd be great. It's trying to focus in. I'm trying a different camera tonight because of the problems I've had. Yeah, and if it would quit doing that, that'd be great. Sorry, better late than never. Um, hockey games uh, went a little, started a little late, went into overtime, then went to shootout. Uh, you Americans will understand, but as Canadians, you could uh, almost uh, imagine how exciting that was. And it was a out where we won uh, one nothing. I am tired, and I really wish it would stop doing that. So greetings. Good evening. The chat line is open. And, uh, oh, Ella has joined us. Robert has joined us. Good evening, guys. How you doing? Sorry, a uh, little late. Hockey, uh, like I mentioned, went into over for a time and then shoot out. And I am super tired. Uh, it's a, a three-on-three league in a kind of a, a half-size rink. And, uh, yeah, a lot of shots. So what's up, guys? Baseball sucks. Oh, and don't even get me started on my golf. All right. Now, like I just mentioned a few seconds ago, I'm trying a new camera, which is uh, already upsetting me, as you can see, because it's uh, refocusing. Ah, all right. So I wonder how many people are going to join us. I know I said it was going to be a little late. I didn't expect it to be this late. And I was kind of wondering if anyone was actually going to stick around. So... For those of you who are joined us, welcome. Ha! Ah, just got to catch my breath here. So what's new? What's happening? Uh, let me open up another tab here on the window. Uh, there were some suggestions on things. And I even went as far as watching some YouTube videos today, and I was actually very disappointed in trying to find a YouTube video that deals with uh, pinion angle. I was very disappointed. Um, I figured some of the big sites or suspension sites would would have a decent size uh, um, video or that. None of the big suspension places had anything like that. So I was really disappointed in that. So let me uh, get to those uh, questions here. Where are they? Let's do a search for posts. Meanwhile, while I'm yapping here, uh, feel free to, to talk amongst yourselves in the chat here, and uh, I'll answer questions as, as, as I can, of course. Okay, where are we going? Anyway, okay, ah, here we are. There's the post right here I want. And there was 31 comments. Okay. So let me go back to the video. Let's open this one. Actually, I'll put it here. That way I can read it in one window and open it in the other. Okay. Howdy, Robert. Hey, Andy. Uh, welcome. Actually, I think you two guys are uh, new to our, our stream. I don't recall seeing your names before, so welcome. Um, when, we, when we did start this, uh, this stream in a couple months ago, I wasn't very active at the time, and it was winter time here in, in Winnipeg, so I had a lot of free time on my hands. And since then, my phone hasn't stopped ringing. Everybody needs a goalie for ball hockey and that. And I'm playing in two different leagues, and now it's playoff time. One league stopped. And then, of course, I was uh, this car was pissing me off for about a month now, but I finally got it running and running good. And, of course, our corporate cousin over there, the Omega, got that almost ready for racing this weekend. Oh, Oh, Robert's got no audio. Can anyone else hear me? Um, hey, Will. So, uh, can can any can anyone else hear me talking? I hope it's not just a problem on my end. Oh, I really, I really hate this camera I really do okay let's see here 
let's see what happens so if I save that hopefully it doesn't kick me out um, okay Johnny has joined us so uh, it looks like everybody can hear me so Robert it may be on your end uh, McElroy hopefully I'm pronouncing that right uh, you might have just have to click out and click back into your browser to to refresh that. Actually, I should probably write that down here. Let me reply to you. Uh, you may have to exit your stream browser and restart the browser and stream back to us. There we go. Uh, it's not the greatest and fastest typing, but I think he got my message. Oh, it must be on my side. Yeah, okay, so yeah, so he got the... Uh, we'll give him a minute there to uh, pop out and pop back in. So we've been active for a few minutes here. Let's see, okay, one second. Well, now what's this computer want to install here? Okay... And of course, it couldn't have done this before I started the stream, could it? So let's see if I give Robert a second here to restart while we wait for him. And we got 10 viewers already. So maybe this later time is a better time for everybody. Okay. Let's open up the uh, first one. The, the biggest wheel tire combo I can put under my car. That's by Charles Albright. Is he online right now? I don't know if I saw his name. Hopefully he can join us. Um, the biggest I'm able to fit on my Nova is a 275.50 on a 15 by 7 rim. Uh, on the Omega, because I screwed that car up a little when I did the rear quarters. The biggest I can go is a 245.60 on a 15 by 7 rim. And I really wish it would quit doing that browsing thing. It's making me dizzy. All right, let's see what else here. Okay. Where did that? I just had those questions up. Where did they go? Man, I, I hate computers. That's why I like working on cars. Um, and then uh, L, uh, good note, or good moat, pardon me. Sorry, I took a couple pucks to the, the head tonight, so my, uh, my eyesight's not the greatest right now. Um, you asked about frame connectors. Now, I have just the bolt-on kind myself, the uh, competition engineering um, three one one six bolt on ones, and to me, it's night and day difference uh, in terms of stiffness. It almost felt, um, but after I put them on, it almost made the car feel like it pivoted with the rear suspension instead of the body flexing. Uh, I, I noticed the big difference there. And um, what I did with mine after they were on the car for about a month is I had them welded on the front subframe. So mine are welded at the front, bolted at the back. In terms of frame rails, I've never, I've never replaced my rear frame rails. I've, I haven't had to or changed anything in my rear frame. Um, that, that's the best I can, I can suggest. I don't know if, in a, okay, we have a, weight on tires or weight on left when adding connectors. Craig Watson says, uh, no reason not to add them. Do it for the weight, with the weight on the suspension. Um, yeah, in fact, I, I, I even put, I got subframe, the same subframe connectors on the, uh, the uh, corporate cousin over there. And then Al also said, yeah, he likes uh, uh, a better, uh, to, for us to start later. Uh, to me, it doesn't matter either way. One sec here, I gotta turn the fan on. I'm I'm a little warm. Okay, let's turn the speed down so it uh, you don't hear that on the mic. And then Will uh, William Hamlet, our uh, founder of the group, 
mentioned pinion angles. I spent somewhat of my day at work, not that I'm going to admit it, on work time looking up pinion angles and how to set them. And I was very disappointed I couldn't find a decent website on, on setting uh, pinion angles. Uh, there was one for the a truck site where a guy used a jack to, to set his angle. And uh, I watched that a few times, but I, I have yet to try and set that on either of my cars. So both my cars are, I guess you could say, factory angled or whatever. Um, I need some time to look that one up. I, I just, I don't know yet. Oh, we have uh, uh, El, Eliud. Eliud. Oh, I, I hope I'm not slaughtering that too bad, buddy. Hi and welcome. And then uh, Rob uh, McElroy, looks like he's back, and uh, I'm hoping he can hear us now. Um, I have them too, and traction bars, I'm waiting to put it on the um, that's the thing. Uh, I'm running both styles of traction bars, as I've mentioned in er earlier streams. I'm running the kind that bolt on and after the spring plate, the bolt right to the spring. That's what I have on my Nova. And they're actually custom made, and I do have the blueprints for how they measure up on my car on my website. If you want the plans to make your own traction bars, I think it cost me about $30 to make them in terms of supplies. And it cost me a bottle for my buddy to weld it all up after I measured it all up. And on the uh, the corporate cousin, um, the Omega, I have the Lakewood traction bars, which replace the, the spring plate. And I don't like them for a few reasons. For one, the bar doesn't extend all the way to the spring eye. So it's actually bending my spring. And secondly, they hang pretty low. And I've actually caught them on the odd speed bump. So that, that's what I like about my custom ones is uh, when, when I design them, I designed the bar to be not only longer to go to the spring eye, but also to be uh, level and not lower than uh, the rim of the car. So I don't, I haven't caught it on anything, knock on wood. All right. So we've got nine viewers. Uh, welcome, guys. Again, feel free to talk amongst yourselves and reply to each other. This isn't just about me yakking here. This is for all of you as well. And yeah, like Rob says, yeah, you got to lengthen them. Yeah, uh, to me, I, I found I even found a difference when it went to the spring. I when I put uh, when I took the old liquids off the Nova and went to the kind that I made, I noticed a difference right away with just that little bit of flex of the spring taken out with it going right to the spring eye, and yeah, the. It was. It's a big deal. It pretty much takes your rear springs out. And again, I apologize for the screen refreshing like that. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Uh, I am trying a different camera tonight. I mean, I could exit and, and start the stream again, but that's kind of a piss off because I have 80 view and I don't want to cause an inconvenience. But uh, again, I, I, I do have... Uh, plans for the traction bars that I've made on my Nova page, uh, ChevyNova.ca slash 73Nova in the, the Project Mean Green section. There's a shameless plug. And also, I just want to send a shout out in case any of our corporate cousins, our uh, members are on. Uh, we also have our sister site, the 7374 G or GM X body. Nova Omega Ventura Apollo site. That's for our X-Body cousins. Um, simply because the Chevy Nova 7374, uh, we want to keep it to just Chevy Novas. It's nothing against our corporate cousins. We just want a site for ourselves. So we created a sister site because some of us have, uh, have more than one. And, you know, we want to post about Omegas and Venturas and Apollos. So definitely check that out, the 7374 GMX body uh, site, um, a Facebook group. That is our six sister group, which is run by uh, Al Goodmoat and um, all of us uh, from 7370, Chevy Nova 7374 are also a part of that group in terms of moderators and admins as well. So I'm just going to throw a plug out for that. Does anyone make a set that, uh, that is long enough? Um, 
Not that I've come across L. At the same time, I never really looked because um, with the Lakewood ones, um, when I saw the my friend Trevor, he had a different set on his Nova, and I just took a picture. And when I looked at them closely, it's I, I figured they'd be easy to make. So I was able to get some steel. Uh, I have a buddy who welds, just made some measurements, took pictures of his traction bars. And I also got a set of traction bars from a friend that I was able to cut up and make into pieces so that I could make it, use it as a template to make the ones that are on my Nova. And as I said, it, it cost me $30 in metal to, to make these ones and a bottle for my buddy to weld it up. Oh, yes. I was just mentioning on the GMX body that Novas are welcome there as well. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to exclude that, Al. I just wanted to uh, emphasize the point that we do have something for the corporate cousins. So, okay, um, getting back to the pinion angle, uh, if, if you go back on two of the posts, there is a conversation back and forth between um, Craig Watson, uh, who runs the Death Nova. He drives a 1973 Nova. He's converted. He also has a web page on setting pinion angle at twoquicknovas.com. So twoquicknovas.com, uh, that's a website by uh, Craig Watson and Bruce Johnson. Bruce has a 72 Nova. We won't talk about the 72. And Craig has the 73 Death Nova. So twoquicknovas.com in their tech in their uh, tech section, they have one that's called setting pinion angles, and I never did read that. You know what? Let's bring it up. What else do we got to talk about, right? All right. So let's throw that up on this screen here. All right, pinion angle is important due to the forces at work in the rear end and the rear suspension of a rear-wheel drive vehicle. Ooh, try saying that two times faster. As power is applied to the rear end via the drive shaft, the pinion gear tries to climb the ring gear. This causes along with the pinion gear to rotate about the axle's center line. The optimum relationship between the pinion gear and the drive shaft is when they are perfectly aligned. In order to achieve this, under power, you must also have some angle built into the setup when the vehicle is at rest and not under any power. And then it says here, the typical leaf spring suspension, you will need five to seven degrees of negative angle. Um, I have a ladder bar for link. Okay, I don't think we have any of that. You, you never want the rear end setup with a positive pinion angle. This is when the yoke of the rear end is tilted upwards more than the drive shaft. This could lead to... Binding of the U-joints and will hurt traction. The real reason we race enthusiasts we race enthusiasts are concerned about this. And basically, it goes on. It's actually just a quick page here uh, to check pinion angle. You know what? I'm going to read. The, okay, let, let me just take a second here. Is there anything in the chat? Okay, there's nothing in the chat. So you know what? I'm going to finish reading this to check the pinion angle. The vehicle needs to be sitting with its weight on the tires as it would be sitting normally. For the best accuracy, place weight in the driver's seat to simulate the driver. So if you've got a friend that may be uh, around your height and weight, get him to come over and uh, sit behind the wheel. Begin by measuring the angle of the drive shaft and writing it down. Then remove the drive shaft from the yoke. No need to totally remove it and spin, and sp spin tranny fluid everywhere. I think he means spray. Tranny fluid there, okay. And place the angle finder on the end of the yoke. The angle from vertical will be equal to the angle of the center line of the pinion gear to the horizontal. If the drive shaft was angled upward, it would be rare to find one that isn't. The rear end is nose down. Not This is not always the case, but be sure you know which way it is positioned. Just add together the two angles you measured. For instance, if the drive shaft is two degrees up from the level of the angle of the drive shaft, Subtract the rear end angle from the drive shaft angle. If the rear end angle is steeper of that of the drive shaft, subtract subtract sorry the angle of the drive shaft from that of the rear end to see how much positive pinion angle you have. For example, if you have a rear end of five degrees from vertical nose up and the drive shaft is angled up three degrees, you have two degrees of positive pinion angle. If this is a leaf spring car, you will need to change the angle by seven degrees to get five degrees of negative pinion angle. Uh, 
That's deep. So that's something I'm going to have to read when I'm not suffering uh, visual blindness from hockey. Um, and probably something uh, I, I really need to check on my cars. I've never checked um, pinion angle. So, and I'll also need to get, uh, I guess, uh, an angle of some sort so I can tell what angle it's at. And it looks like you have to get something that's pretty decent because we're talking two, three degrees. So you're going to need something that measures uh, pretty accurately. All right, this can be done with wedges between the rear end and the spring speed chops and the alignment chops. Keep these around. If you can't find them, Summit and Jags carries them. Okay, so again, that's an article on twoquicknovas.com, setting pinion angle, and that's in the tech articles that can be found on their website. Hey, Joshua, how you doing, buddy? Um... Good to, good to have you. Uh, we're a little late tonight because, uh, well, first of all, let me explain something. I am Canadian, and therefore, when the call of hockey comes, I have to go and play. I'm, I'm a goalie uh, in hockey, and when you're a goalie, you're everybody's friend. And I got a call uh, this afternoon that I had to go spare in, a, in another league starting up in another division. And I really need the exercise because I've been trying to drop weight. And uh, I had one heck of a workout tonight, and the game ran really late. And But we're here. All right. Uh, what is the orange block under the hood on the upper firewall on the driver's side? Sorry, I have no clue what it is called. Okay, um, Dylan, what that is, uh, I don't have one. It, mostly they're found on the 74s. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you can see over here. Yeah, it's right here, located just over behind the uh, master. Is um, that's uh, there's a, a little module that actually plugs into that for the driver's seat belt override for the I guess the like a neutral safety switch, so you can start the car for troubleshooting, diagnosing it. I forget what that what it's actually called here. Let me take a quick look. Um, uh, 74 Nova, I think it's a neutral safe, or, um, engine bay, oh, uh, let's see, let's, over, okay, oh, we'll, we'll figure this out for you here, I forget what it's called now, ah, here we are, it is the, do you know the name of it, I'm trying to locate one, Oh, man, like that is not what I just, okay, see more right here. That is called the Seatbelt Interlock Override. Uh, Congress enacted and repelled the law in 1974, making the seatbelt interlocks obsolete. Um, in 74, we used to unplug the connector under the driver's seat to disable seatbelt controls. Um, and there's actually, there's actually a picture. You know what? Let me save this picture and see. If I can put it in the chat here for you. So, uh, reply, and no, it doesn't let me. Okay, oh, seatbelt. Oh, man, you know, I got a terrible memory. Seatbelt interlock override. Mm -hmm. Seatbelt interlock override. Allows you to start. The, uh, let me find. Let me find the proper uh, definition for that. Besides that quick Google search. Okay, so let's do a, a search for the seatbelt interlink override. Remember, Google is your friend. It's it's not that I know a lot of answers. I I just get the answers from Google. Okay. Uh, starter interlock override, but that's, I don't think it's called that. Okay. Uh, maybe I found something here. What is the seat belt starter interlake system? This system prevents a vehicle from starting unless seat belts are fastened. 
but it goes beyond that. The seatbelts must be fastened within a specific sequence. For example, the driver's front seatbelt must, must get into the car, close the door, sit down, and fasten the seatbelt. If the seatbelts are not fastened or they in, fastened in the incorrect order, the car will not start. <coughs> all right, so what does this all mean? Uh, but it was taken, it was uh, repelled back in 75. Can I eliminate this? You know, review, we strongly recommend without the seatbelt in the law. So I, I hope that answers your question. Let, let me go back here. Ooh, where, where'd all the check go? Okay. So three degrees is normal. Harbor Freight sells them real cheap. I'm assuming, Rob, you're talking about the, um, for the, um, oh, man. I'm not having a good night. You're talking about the angle, setting the angle of the shims for the diff, I'm assuming. Al, getting back to traction bars, I believe when you want it straight from yoke to yoke when the bars hit, uh, that that's how I have mine set up so that it's right at the spring eye with the uh, and I use polyurethane snubbers on the on the Omega. Do I notice a difference? Not really. Uh, I guess yeah, I do notice a difference. I can hear them hit in the Nova when the traction bars are engaging, where in the Omega it's rubber, so you, you don't hear it. Okay, Dylan White, uh, appreciate the help, but I'm still lost in the wiring harness here. All right, um, Dylan, what are you trying to wire? What do you need help with? We can definitely discuss some wiring uh, issues. And my buddy, Doug Cho, the founder of the Leela Nova Group. Doug is was building a Nova for a uh, 73 Nova for his very first granddaughter. And recently, Doug has been ill. And uh, Doug, it's good to see you out of the joining us tonight welcome my friend angle finder okay that's what he's talking about so robert getting back there three degrees is normal uh to find an angle finder for uh setting your pinion angle and you know what that is something i'm i'm gonna definitely look into you know what let's make a note of that and i know i still haven't typed up the notes from the last couple streams uh, I've been bad. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I just I just haven't had the time. Okay, the date today is June 25th. Okay, pinion angle, because I need to set that in both my cars. And I don't know if Craig Watson has joined us. I was hoping he would provide us with some uh, hindsight in uh, hooking up and modifying your stock suspension for hooking uh, at the drag strip. So, all right. So, it's, oh, wow, look at that. It's been half an hour already. So, uh, yeah, Dylan, again, if you want to uh, mention uh, what's going on with the wiring, we'll see if we can help you out a little bit there. And uh, hopefully, uh, I'm, I'm hoping the video's okay tonight. Uh, if somebody can let me know, has the video been blotchy, blurry? Um, causing issues or has been a, a steady stream. Uh, I've been having trouble with this computer for well, well over a month, almost two months, I guess. Now I just I haven't spent much time trying to fix it. Although we think we narrowed it down to the camera, that's why I'm using a different camera today. Although I know this one keeps going blurry and refocusing, uh, which is giving me a headache. So hopefully uh, it's not pissing you guys off too much. Okay, I redid the whole car. I have three wires that are coming out of the fuse panel or fuse plug at the firewall. It has a fusible link attached and it's short and has a little circle eyelid connector on all three. Okay, I think what you might be talking about is this puppy right here. Um, oh, what is this called now? It's um, the horn. Is it a horn relay? Is that the official name for it? What you're looking for, Dylan, is this piece right here. Um, let me take a picture of that for you, bud. And then, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, now everybody wants to chat. Sure, they wait till I'm online. 
Okay, so that's that's what you want right there. That's where it's all connected to. So Dylan, I will send you that that picture here. First of all, let's see if I can find you. Okay, I'm gonna get on my phone here. Uh, I'm gonna be rude now because I'm I'm on my phone while I, I should be on the stream here. So Dylan, my friend, uh, let me find you here. All right, and Dylan. Oh, what's your last name? Whited. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm again very bad with names. Uh, view profile. Okay, my friend, I am sending you that picture I took of my thumb. Good thing I took two of them. And I believe that is a horn relay. Let me just double check that name for you. Okay, and what that is is a constant power goes to that. So let's uh, let's check that out here. Seventy three Nova Horn Relay. And yes, that is exactly what it's called. It is a, a horn relay. So there's actually one on uh, the horn. There's a horn relay test on Steve's Nova site. When I Google it, all I'm Googling right there is 73 Nova horn relay. And they are available, uh, yeah, whatever. And it looks like it's a 72, 73 item. They're $55 here. I found it. I just found one quickly here at uh, Ground Up, um, ss396.com. Uh, let's see if Summit Racing also carries those. And then we I think that might be the, the piece that you're missing. Okay, Horn Relay. Uh, that's slightly different. That's slightly different. No, that's not it. That's not it. That's a regular relay. No, that's not it. That's not it. Oh boy, there's a lot of them. Okay. Um, okay, let's go here. Let's uh, narrow our search down to 73. Make Chevrolet and model. Um, why is there no Nova? There's no Nova. Are you kidding me? Okay, let's just, uh, okay, I'm just going to use 1973 Chevrolet. That's all I'm going to use. And it doesn't, doesn't give me anything for that. Okay, well, let's try this part number here, GAC775. Let's see if I can find this anywhere else for you. 73, again, I'm in Google. All I typed was 73 Nova Horn Relay. And actually, the first picture that came up is uh, right here. Oh, and Classic Industries also sells. I'll take you. Uh, I'll take another picture of that for you, bud. Um. Oh, that's <laughs> gonna give you a picture of me. Uh, all right, there. I'm, I'm gonna be in rude, and I'm sending pictures, and that's at. Uh, Classic Industries, or send you another one here. Um, all right. There, Dylan. Uh, check your uh, personal messages on your Facebook profile. There should be a few things there waiting for you, my friend. And I think that's all you're going to need uh, to fix your wiring. Okay, so Doug, oh, so everybody says, yeah, it's messing up. All right, the only thing I can think of left is it's this damn extension cord. I have a powered uh, USB extension cord so I can bring the camera with me. Obviously, that's causing a problem. Oh, okay. Al just uh, wanted to straighten out because, uh, again, uh, I'm having trouble today. He wanted to mention that pinion angle with the bars. You want uh, the two yokes to be at a straight line, zero angle when your traction bars are engaged and uh, the bars hit. So, again, I'm going to have to check that. Hey, Gary, how you doing, buddy? Welcome. you joining us. And then, okay, Al says the video has been good on his end. Rock Auto has it. Yep. 
And Gary's good over here so far. So, okay. Um, I think before I do the next stream, I'm going to have to flatten this computer, and I'm just going to reinstall Windows and and the camera driver, and I'm going to get rid of this uh, USB cord. Um, I guess I'm going to have to try something else. I kind of enjoyed having the cord because it let me walk around the, the car a little bit. I'll have to I'll have to think up something else. Maybe I'll have to bring my laptop out here, and uh, with the laptop, I can I can walk around. All right, so I, um, guys, thank you again for uh, for pitching in and, and helping our uh, Nova brother here uh, find those horn relays. I, I appreciate the help. Um, I guess I probably should have said this at the beginning uh, as a disclaimer. By no means am I trying to push any product, brand, website, anything like that. Uh, I, I, these are just pieces that I found either by using Google, through social media, or parts I've just been able to buy that I've installed on my Nova. I'm not being paid to, to you know, promote names of uh, equipment and that. I just want to share my experience in, and uh, equipment that I bought that works good for me and I want to share that with you my friends so, disclaimer legal disclaimer yada yada and speaking of which got some new parts to install um, chassis parts and it's not a big deal really um, what they are is they're the lower control arm bump uh, I got them uh, actually I bought them through Amazon they were like eight nine bucks and the reason why I bought them is uh, originally my, uh, the Omega there, the corporate cousin, was uh, a six-cylinder car. And when I put the V8 in it, wasn't aware of the spring difference. And boy, did it bottom out. And it bottomed out pretty hardcore a few times there that it destroyed these. Destroyed, like nothing left. So the other day when I was making a list, well, when I was making a list of stuff I needed, need ah, I don't need it right away like uh, and I needed these control arms I ended up buying the set and because they were so cheap I bought two more so I can put new ones in the Nova too so I'll look for that bolt later of course I gotta drop it maybe I'll watch the video later and see where it bounced uh, oh no you can't see it there okay all right yeah uh, like Gary said Moog's one of the best that's for sure um, when I buy parts, yeah, I tried to buy the name brand parts like like Moog. Um, what else have I uh, bought? Or uh, Federal uh, Mogul for my uh, bearings. Uh, I redid the bearings in the uh, Omega. So if you need part numbers, again, a, a shameless plug for my website, chevynova.ca slash 73nova. I have a section for Nova miscellaneous parts information where I've uh, noted the part, the brand, and the part number of stuff I've used either on the Nova or the Omega. And I just, I've kind of made it as a list for myself as an online diary. But also, hey, if it works for me, it may work for you. So feel free to check that out too. And actually, Moog uh, are, are really, it's not that expensive. So, boy, that, that bolt really bothers me. I don't know where that would have gone. Oh, found it. There we go. There we go. So we'll just throw that back in there before I lose that again. So again, uh, if you're looking for lower control our uh, bump stops, Moog uh, part number uh, 6606. And I bought these at Amazon of all places. And they got delivered within two days. So I was really happy with that. Again, not trying to plug any particular uh, business or that, but sometimes uh, shipping to Canada uh, can, can take a, a, a little bit out of our pocketbook. So I, I like Amazon for the fact that I get free shipping sometimes to Canada and I don't get hit with all the taxes and brokerage fees. And that's another thing. Hey, Canadians on the channel, Canadians, with orders of $300 or more from Summit Racing, we now get free shipping. I imagine we still have to pay uh, the duty and that kind of crap and take the bath on the exchange. But, hey, free shipping, that's going to be 50 bucks back in our pocket. 
All right. So, oh, there's eight people still joining us. Hey, guys, feel free to chat amongst yourselves as well. And I guess while we're, uh, while we got some time here, let's go back to the questions here. So, yeah, about opinions. Okay, we covered that. So, William and Craig had a really good discussion on that. So, if you guys uh, go back, uh, do a search for the post on, you know, topics for tonight, uh, you'll, you'll find all that. And then uh, Jason Ake uh, asked about rear shock relocations for wider tire swaps. I haven't done it on my Nova, but I did help my friend Ian do it on his 72 Nova. Um, I'll have to get the part number from him if he still has it. And basically, it's just a bar you buy that bolts or you can weld it in between the two uh, rear uh, subframe rails. And the shocks bolt to it as opposed to... Um, to uh, the, the frame rail. And it's actually really easy to install. I mean, it took us all of about, I think about 10 minutes. Okay, so Kim, the later show seems to bring more people in. <laughs> Unfortunately, Kim hasn't joined us, or did she? I gotta agree, Gary. Uh, this, this happens to be one of my favorite groups and I'm very thankful that me to participate in being an admin and well first a moderator now an admin and then to further allow me the the freedom to go a little further and do these streams uh, again my my goal for these streams is to try and provide some knowledge if I can help people answer questions or people can help me answer questions or just to generally chat about Nova's hey feel free to chat it up guys I don't have to be the only one here but uh, this is definitely the coolest group uh, with the 73704 GMX body group coming in a close second. That's for you, Al. All right. And then that's pretty much it for that particular post. And that post I posted on Monday at 2.20. So if you really want to do a search on the forum and take a look at that. And what else? Let's, uh, let's take a quick moment to take a look on the group. And let's go back. And uh, do a little bit of a recap. Looks like we have a few new members. And guys, we have some great pictures. Uh, everybody participating in the uh, um, days of the week themes. You know, taillight Tuesday, motor Monday, side shot Saturday, Sunday, front end Friday, wheels Wednesday, or I don't know. You pick something. Really, I don't care what the reason is. Please upload pictures. Love seeing the pictures of your cars. Especially if you got dark green ones like my Nova. I love to see Novas and what they look like without rust. So there's some, some nice uh, pictures here. Uh, Joseph Collins posted a nice one of his hatch back there, the tail lights. And then Gary uh, took his, his Nova out to Sonic for lunch and uh, took a picture of it in the parking lot there. I, I kind of like the black trunk lid, Gary, and you actually got me thinking maybe I should – Paint my trunk lid black. Like, my paint is terribly faded on the trunk. And I've often thought about spray bombing it. But now that I see you with the black trunk, and I mean, I, my hood's black already. Man, maybe I'm going to paint my trunk. I don't know. I, I really like that look. And, and for the longest time, uh, I used to drive my Nova every day. Like, I was putting 6,000 6, miles on it a summer. Really until about 2005 when I got the Omega and then the mileage kind of dropped in half because now I'm driving, you know, both cars half time. And then the price of gas and then I started taking the bus to work and now I'm lucky if I drive it 2,000 uh, miles. Of course, I've gone through a few motors and, well, this one, uh, this 406 isn't exactly the, the friendliest on fuel, but it's, it's not the worst either. That's where we are with that. And then uh, Tom uh, uh, Bennerman, Brennerman. Oh, I hope I pronounced that right. I'm so bad with names, man. Uh, that's a beautiful shot of your car there. Uh, nice blue with white racing stripes there for Taillight Tuesday. Love that. And uh, Jeff uh, Sixth, uh, he posted his in a reply. And then uh, it looks like. Uh, Steph Taylor is, uh, doing an engine swap at his coming up and Lane Sizemore with his, uh, beautiful 73 Nova parked next to a Chevelle at a car show there with red lighting under the hood. 
That uh, that looks pretty badass. And uh, David uh, Gerard, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. He's looking for a passenger side uh, passenger side tail light, as the one in his hatchback is trashed. So if somebody can help him out there, that'd be pretty cool. And what else is going on there? And in the uh, Andy uh, Proth, 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 Prost. Oh, I don't even want to pronounce bad last names because I'm so bad with it. But he did a quick rendering of his father-in-law's '74 Nova. That looks awesome. Would love to know how you do that. And then uh, Richard Tucker asked, he has a 73 Ventura. Ooh, somebody said the corporate cousin. And he's looking for a complete body mount kit. Uh, earlier last week, and I believe last week on a stream, we talked about suspension, energy suspension uh, parts.com, uh, having all kinds of kits, whole kits, partial kits, kits for this, kits for that. Great place to start. At least look on their website, get a part number, and then you can shop around. I believe Summit Racing also carries their products too. And our founder, uh, William, looks like the engine is back in his Nova after a year of rebuilding and that. Got to be excited there, eh, Will? And then Koya Stanton with his orange Nova with the black rally stripe down the side and blacked out taillight and panel. <laughs> he just posted that three hours ago. That looks really sharp. And then uh, Eric, Eric uh, posted uh, a motor shot there with the, the bird catcher. Man, I love those bird catchers. A lot of chrome under the hood there. And, oh, ooh, a video. Okay, I'll have to watch that later. And, of course, uh, Al, I picked your car uh, for our cover picture this week. I've still got about 150 pictures that I've, like I said, I, I'm always saving pictures that you've uploaded, particularly pictures that will fit good in our cover uh, picture area of our group. And I've gone to the point where I've saved so many that I'm now switching it twice a week uh, because I want to showcase everybody's Nova. So please continue uh, posting uh, your pictures. Okay, so Gary wants to learn more about Shock Relocate. And Gary, I will try to get you some information. I'll have to talk to my buddy Ian. Like I said, we did it on his 72 Nova. So let me see if I can information for you there shock relocation another guy you may you may want to message about that would be uh rob exner he has a twin turbo 74 nova here in winnipeg the car is absolutely beautiful and he's done a lot of modifications on it including the car runs uh, high nines low tens on a 275 tire so if anybody knows suspension that i know uh, Rob Exner would be a guy you may want to uh, you may want to send a message to. He's on the group. You can also find him and his friends. They do a show every Wednesday night on uh, if you go on YouTube, SPP TV, SPP TV. If you do a search for that, you'll find some videos on Rob's Nova. And uh, again, if you if you send Rob an email uh, or a private message, I'm pretty sure he may be able to to answer you as well. All right, and Dylan would like to hear about everybody's gear, suspension, and converter setups. He's doing a big block swap. Well, I guess I'm out because I'm a small block guy. I'm running all stock suspension on both my cars with just like minor tweaks of traction bars. Um, the Nova is running just, you know, stock Monroe since it tracks shocks in the back. The Omega's got coilovers. That's how it came, and the springs are so sagged out. Um, I've also asked people, people have asked me, uh, Dave, what's the lowering kit you're using in your Olds Omega? 50-year-old springs. All right. And Gary says he hopes his car will be blue one day. Uh, me, I, I would like to stay with uh, the midnight green because, well, that's the color my car came in. As a child, I grew up loving the color green because of the Nova. So I, I got to stay with green. And I've even been thinking about spray bombing the Omega 
that's the Nova. I've also thought of swapping the front ends and doing all that, you know, clone kind of stuff, but that's a sensitive topic for some of the purists on our site. Hey, Rex, Rex has joined us. How you doing, Rex? Uh, burnt Orange. Uh, not sure what uh, Roy is shopping on eBay, but he found them cheaper. Oh, yeah, by all means, when, I, you know, when, when I'm suggesting, you know, go to Summit or this or that to find part numbers, find the part numbers you need, then do a search and see if you could find them cheaper, um, whether it be suspension parts, engine parts, electrical parts. And I know Kim had found, and it's posted on the, uh, the forum, the connectors used for the windshield washer uh, motor pump. So I'm going to write that down on my uh, website because I may need that part number one day. And where are we at? Okay. All right. I see here, getting some tags about almost every minute. Facebook's not receiving video quality. Whoa. Of course not, because I got a stupid computer. I work on cars, not computers. But I guess I do work on computers during the day. Okay, let's close all the tabs here to the right. And I'm going to keep going back on, oh, wow. Russell Montgomery posted some pictures of his 73 Nova. Has a little bit patina, you know, in the front corner of the fenders and the wheel wells, just like mine. Love it. And that is a beautiful picture. Got his wheels all shined up with the rallies on it, all chromed up. Um, Russell, that is a beautiful picture and possibly a candidate for the next, uh, I'm going to have to save that one. I, re I love those pictures. I, lo I love the pictures. I just love seeing 73, 74 Novas, man. And you know what? I, I even find myself not so much participating in the other Nova groups as much as between this one and our GMX body one. Just because it's, I'm a 73, 74 guy. Always have been, always will be. All right. It looks like Russell is also looking for a passenger panel. It goes from the door back to the, to the truck, to the truck. It's probably a trunk he's meaning. Oh, and it's a hatchback. So he's looking for rear trim, I'm assuming. So the inside interior panel. And then, hey, look at that. I posted a picture for Taillight Tuesday. And then a few people also joined in on that. Right on. And then uh, Rob Griffin, looks like he's putting in some QA1 suspension parts in his Nova. Um, really eager to find out how that's going to work. Is that front or rear? Oh, here's a picture. Um, he's got them on the rear of his car. John Bruce or Joe Bruce posted a picture of them on his car with a disc rear disc brake set. Boy, that looks pretty sharp. And hey, Russell is uh, Russell has shared some great pictures. So I'm just gonna make a comment there. Some great pictures, my friend. Man, I love. I really like the pictures of his car. All right, so let's see. All right, uh, any comments, questions? We're approaching about 53 minutes. I tried to do this for at least an hour, but, I mean, if, uh, you know, it gets quiet and nobody's talking or I run out of material, which is where I'm pretty much at right now, uh, I'll probably shut it down. But give you guys a few minutes if you want to chat it up or if you got any questions. Man, I'm dying of thirst here again uh, I apologize for not being uh, um, uh, prompt and doing the show the same time every week. I just summers are short here in Winnipeg, and I just I haven't had much time. And in the winter times, it'll be a lot more because I don't have as much to do. All right. And really, the, this stream, um, it'll be shared probably on the GM uh, X-Body uh, sister site. I, I've thought about trying to do one for, you know, Nova Omega show. But I want to keep this to 73, 74 because I want to keep our group kind of special. We are the original. 
but I mean, if there's calls for it, I mean, I, I may, maybe we'll we'll do something. I don't know. Just in case anyone wants to see what the front of an Omega looks like. There we go. Now, now you can see the, the front of the Omega. Of course, the front of the Nova. Big bumpers, yo. Yeah, I'm probably going to regret that comment. I know there's some people who like their uh, like their bumper tucks. I'm surprised nobody's brought that up yet this week. Somebody usually likes to. And i got to admit, I'm kind of a bit of a purist myself. <coughs> I mean, I, 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 of course, will respect anybody's, you know, build, anybody's car. You know, everybody's entitled to customizing their car the way they want. Hey, if you like the 70 to 72 front end on your car, have at her because that means more parts for me. But uh, me, I like the big bumpers because half the time that's where I put my tools. And Dylan, oh, okay. Um, I'm glad the, the shows could help you tonight, Dylan. You know what? a stream that makes it worth it for me um i'm by no means a professional i am just a backyard guy who's been working on novas i've been well i've been driving my nova since 1995 and i didn't start tweaking in and, and playing under the hood till 1999 2000 um you know once i got a decent job and then i was able to you know save some money and i had some money to do stuff I originally started with changing the two barrel to a four barrel, changed the intake. The best thing I ever did on this Nova, well, I guess one of the two best things, was convert it to HEI ignition over points. And then the second best thing would be going to the uh, Holly Sniper fuel injection system, um, which is still, you know, I let the computer do all that, but I've got the cable now to hook it up to a laptop, so... I'm going to see just uh, how badly I can make this thing run. So, Dylan, I'm glad uh, I'm glad uh, we could help you out. And by all means, uh, post questions on the forum, everybody, anybody. There is no stupid question. I guarantee you somebody is probably thinking the same thing. Um, we, we have a lot of people on the, on the group. I believe we have over 800, maybe 900 members. And there's probably somebody who may be too shy or – not sure how to word it or just isn't comfortable posting it but is dying to know something so please by all means post all your questions i don't care if, if you think they're stupid they may not be stupid to us and not to me if it's a problem for you it's going to be a problem for me and i want to help you we want to help you that's what this group is for if somebody ridicules you there's enough moderators and admins that will take care of it and if it's bad enough, we'll remove them from the group because we don't want those kind of people. And for the most part, um, we have a lot of great members, great, mature members. You'll get your answer. You might get even more than your answer. So I just wanted to say that again. Please post away. Gary, oh, I'm bumper talking. It's going to happen. Oh, Gary, we used to be friends, man. We used to be friends. I'm not going to have to block you. No, I'm just kidding, man. Uh, bumper talking. Hey, again, teach its own. Uh, I know there's a lot of people with 74 Novas who have gone to the 73 metal brackets. Now, it brings your bumper in a little bit, but you'll still have, you know, a bit of a gap. You'll still have a bit of a gap. But you'll lose 100 to 120 pounds off that front bumper by removing that rebar off the inside of the 74 bumper with the shocks and go into just the 73 brackets. Just throwing that out there. Back bumpers are totally different, and I have an album posted on our Chevy Nova 7374 site. Maybe that album I should share with our sister site. 73 and 74 rear bumpers are different. Not just so much in the shape of them, bolt locations and brackets. Completely different. All right, I got a couple more comments here, so we're going to keep going. And, uh, yeah, Rex, uh, nice to be able to go back and watch again. Again, uh, I, I do upload. We do have a YouTube channel now, Chevy Nova 7374, just, <clears throat> just like our group name. I started that channel, and I've uploaded our previous streams there. 
The only downside to it is you don't see the comments that are popping up as our stream goes along. If you're to watch it again on Facebook, you'll see the comments in real time as you're watching it. You don't get that when I upload it to YouTube. So that's the downside, but you get the, the commentary, of course. And I try to read out the questions um, and the comments so that, you know, if you do watch it again, you don't see them. You'll, you'll still know that somebody's posting something and we're dealing with something. Again, that's on YouTube, Chevy Nova 73-74, same as our group name. And I've also got uh, uh, some other videos on there, and I'm willing to post other videos of members on there. I have the video of the Morris Classic Concept 3-point front seatbelt installs for 73 Novas. I've also got um, a, horn, uh, video, a horn video that Kim, Nova Girl, uh, Whitemore has done on her Nova. I just got to do some editing. I promised I would do for her, which I haven't done yet. And I've got to get to that, and I want to upload that for her, and that's going to be on our page. And again, if you have some videos of installs you've done on your car and you want to share them, <clears throat> by all means, we can put them on the YouTube channel. It's part of the group. You're part of the group. It's your channel. And Al's going 68 to 72. Oh, Al, we used to be friends as well. No, I'm just kidding, man. All right, are you changing the back taillight panel too, or are you just going to just change the front end? All right, uh, curious where to get bumper brackets for the rear. Now, are you talking 73 or 74? And are you trying, are you referring to doing a bumper tuck on a 74 and making a custom bracket? Because I think you're going to have to do custom brackets for that. Ah, uh -huh, Al says he's going to keep his big butt. <laughs> yes, I got, I got to like that. Personally, I like a bit of the, the back bumper being heavier. Like on the Omega, I haven't touched the bumpers. I kind of like the heaviness on that back bumper because it gives me the weight for the weight transfer when I'm racing. Although, I, I have been tempted to take off the front bumper and drill in that uh, bumper support and, and lighten it up a little because, uh, and I don't mean to talk about the corporate cousin right now, but uh, every company like Dragway and Gimli, Manitoba, where my dad and I take the Omega out and we've been racing it. This is dad's fifth year of racing. And oh, let's turn this darn phone off. I don't, where dad and I have been racing this for about five years. Uh, he's the driver, I'm the mechanic, and I'm also the announcer at the track. So I don't get to, you know, do the videos as much for him like I used to. But if you're curious, oldsomega.ca on YouTube, you can see videos of my dad racing the Omega. But I'm hoping to lighten up the, the front bumper a little bit. However, this past week, I had to change the rad in it because the three-core rad started to split on the tank on the uh, upper side where the return hose goes. And I put the old Nova um, four-core in there because I have aluminum in the Nova. And... Boy, is that sucker heavy. Like, I, I've lost about 40 to 45 pounds since last November just by eating better, playing more hockey, and, and being better. So I lost a little bit of weight. Well, I just threw it back in there by putting that rat in there. So, Okay, so Gary here has uh, replied, uh, going to make my own brackets front and rear. I will post pictures when we do it. Well, of course you will. And the more pictures, the better. And I'm pretty sure, um, I'm pretty sure people, somebody will find that useful. I mean, if you want to make a video, we could post a video for you as well, Gary. Totally up to you, my friend. I believe, um, is it Lane, Lane Sizemore? I believe he made custom brackets. You might want to do a search for some of his posts. Let me write that down. If, if I get a chance, I'll... Uh, I'll send those to you. Uh, custom bumper bracket. So if you can, guys, um, hope for rain because if it's raining, then I can't go out in the cars and then I'll have to do some of this stuff. Uh, custom bumper brackets. And that's for um, uh, Gary. Okay. Oh, another one for Gary. Okay. So Gary's going to keep me busy here. And Gary, by all means, if I don't get this done for you in a couple days to within a week, don't be afraid to send me a PM and message me and hound me because I got a bad memory. 
And, oh, I definitely won't be doing it Thursday because my team made it to the finals in one of the other leagues I'm in. But don't be afraid to hound me, my friend. Um, I will get you that stuff. But if you take a look, Lane Sizemore in the post, do a search for posts. I believe he made some beautiful custom brackets, very detailed in how to cut, how to notch, and stuff like that. Okay, and then uh, Dylan says, I don't have the shock bumper. Okay, so I'm assuming you have a 73 then, Dylan. Uh, you'll probably have to make a custom bracket if uh, if you don't have the shock bumper because the, the brackets are different in 73. Um, not too sure how to do the bumper tuck. That's something I should look at again. Uh, Rob Exner with his 74 Nova. And the reason I'm speaking so much about Rob's Nova, he lives in Winnipeg here, and I've drooled over that Nova many a times. I love the modifications he's done. And it's easy for me to look at because I've, I go to the place every now and then. I go to his place for the SPP TV Wednesday night grad show. So SPP TV, uh, if you talk to, if you send a question to Rob during their feed, he might be able to send you a picture. And then, uh, oh, I love the filler pack. Okay, I actually pulled it off a Ventura. Well, that would be the same in the rear. The back bumpers are the same amongst all the corporate cousins. It's just the front bumpers that changed for the uh, Omega, as you can see the uh, the shape. Of, oh, here, let's, uh, oh, I'm not really good here. You can see the shape, how it's kind of pointy, where the Nova one here is not as pointy. You can see the shape's a little different. And the front bumpers on the 73, 74 corporate cousins are different on the front as well. And I got no comments. Oh, come on, guys. Talk to me. As long as you keep talking to me, I'll stay on the, uh, online here with you. Otherwise, well, what time is it? Oh, it's 20 after 10. Time flies when you're having fun. Okay. Again, just talking about uh, back bumpers. 73, 74 are different. There is an album posted in the Chevy Nova. 73, 74 in the photo section under albums. You will see one. And I actually have notes in the picture there for you guys. I made that a long time ago. I may have to do a video on that for 73, 74 on our YouTube channel. Let's make a note of that. All right. So under Gary's stuff on my own, okay, uh, back bumper video. Back bumper 73, 74 difference video. Of course, I, I got to get Kim's video done before I can do this video because she'll probably be upset if I didn't. And Kim, when you watch this later, I missed you. All right. Okay, well, let's see. What else is up, folks? What's on your mind? Hey, talk about your Novas. Let's go. Chat's open for you guys as well. We'll give it a few minutes here, see if anybody wants to, to keep chatting or has any questions. I don't even know. Am I still even online? So, yeah. Again, I, I got to apologize for not doing this stream on a more consistent basis. I didn't plan to be this busy and this involved with uh, various hockey leagues with some of my friends' teams. And tonight I had planned to be on time. Let's do this. Boom, boom. And then I get a call. And, and again, being a goalie, if I don't show up, a team forfeits. It's not that I can't show up. And it's helping me lose weight. So I need the exercise. But I, I do try to make it on, on Tuesdays. Try to keep the uh, – oh, okay. I got a question. Dylan White, neutral safety switches. Are they located – on the column, and it is a green, and uh, pink and green wire. Yes. Yes, they are. Let me get uh, here. One sec. Oh, I know I have one here that I can actually use in a demonstration. Neutral safety switches. Where are you? Well, that's not a good one to use. Where's the other one I have? I thought I had a new one around here. Oh, here we are. Here we are. Oh, drop it. Oh, drop that too. Uh-oh. Okay. 
Neutral safety switch. I keep a spare. It is unbelievable how something like this, which is, I think is a $30 part, will cripple your car. All right. So, yeah, we have um, the green and pink one I think you're talking about are, is it that? Those are the reverse lights. Is that the reverse lights? One sec. Let me check because I, I got them custom wired on the uh, Omega here because of the floor shifter. Let me check. I can't see anything so I didn't take a flashlight. But I believe the, the pink and the yellow one, you know what? I just posted a picture of that somewhere. Where did I post that? I might have posted that in, uh, let me find it for you, my friend. Omega, I think I posted in the Omega 73, 74 group. I think I posted that for Craig. Okay, but I will find out for you. Just hang on a second, my friend. Yeah, this one is fresh in my memory here. Okay, coming along, got some wiring, brake line parts. Uh, manifold, uh, turn off, and slowly become eventually getting there. Hatchback, speakers, no, not speakers, slowly coming along. Okay, you know what? Let me check. Maybe it's in my chat with Craig. Craig Antonio, uh, I speak with him quite often. He uh, lives in Saskatchewan there, and we, uh, we chat quite a bit. But I guess we don't chat enough because I don't see it. What the heck? Okay. Got some wiring in that. I know I just sent that to him. Maybe it's not that group. Maybe it's in the Chevy Nova group. Okay, let me check that again. Ah, let's go to Google. Google's your friend. Okay. Neutral safety switch wiring on a Nova. And that's not what I'm getting. Okay. Because it helps if I... Oh, ba 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 start position. And that, man, that, you know, it is funny. Although we have so much information on the internet, it's funny how much information we don't have. And this is kind of crap. We'll find it one sec. I'll find it. I just had it. I know I did. So I just looked this up. But if you if you're looking for the part number, I have a, a couple here. The one uh, the one I use is from uh, Standard. NS14, and that's the one I use in the, the Nova here. Um, this, I believe these two here, and I don't know if they're purple and purple or green and pink, but the, the two connector like this will be your reverse lights, and this will be your neutral safety switch. I just can't remember the colors offhand for you. Oh, floor pan. Oh, trunk floor pans, Paco. Ah, uh, yeah, pretty much I think you have to cut them out at a, at a record if you can find one that's in decent shape. I don't know of any, um, I don't know of any floor pants that are available for 73, uh, 74. So here, let's, uh, let's just get back. To, I still got to, yeah, you know what, Dylan, there's uh, instructions here. And uh, disregard extra terminal. Well, that's not good, huh? Well, 
Well, those instructions are pretty useless. So you know what, Dylan? I'm going to find out for sure for you, and I'm going to get back to you because uh, I can't just leave you with this half information. So, okay, Dylan. Um, what did, and neutral safety switch wiring. Yeah, I, I did this on my uh, Oles Omega when I put a BNM uh, Pro Ratchet shifter in it, and I ended up wiring the micro switches inside my shifter and away from this. So let, let me find that, that for you. Neutral safety wiring. Because I know I just I just did that. Oh, Craig has just joined us. Craig, good timing. Um, our friend here, Dylan, is asking about the neutral safety switch wiring and what the pink and green wire is with the connector. And I know I sent you the pictures and you it right now. So if uh Craig, if you can send it to me through chat, um, then I can send it to Dylan. Or if you want to send it to Dylan directly, by all means. And then Paco, again, he's having trouble finding a rear trunk floor. Uh, yeah, uh, I know you can get trunk floors for 68 to 72, but the trunk floors are different. And 73, 74 have the hump because we have the bigger gas tank. So if you go with that route, then you'd have to change your uh, – You'd have to change, yeah, the tank is the floor. I guess it depends how badly it's rotten and where it's rotten. If you can, Paco, take a picture of your trunk floor and post it. And hopefully somebody can give you a better answer than I can. And I apologize, I can't give you an answer for that. Uh, Ella, thanks, Ella. Ho hopefully some of you are enjoying it. I, it's not always very constructive. And then I just kind of wing it. Wing it as the questions come in. Yes, the neutral safety switch, that is on the column down by the uh, firewall. And uh, it's two, I think, quarter-inch little sheet metal screws that hold it on the column. And that piece slides into the column depending where your shifter is. Yeah, the one on the column works off the shifter basically. Oh, okay. Craig says the picture's on the new site. Ah, perfect. Uh, Dylan, are you on the GM XBody site as well as our site? Just if you can, let me know. And on the column down by the firewall, though. Yeah, that's that's where... Okay, uh, see, Gary's already answering this for me. Thanks. Ah, green and purple are neutral safety. Green and pink are reverse lights. Perfect. Um, Gary has a whole shell with a good floor there for sale, Paco. If you see that, you might want to exchange uh, messages with Gary, and he could hook you up. Oh, that is wicked. Okay, and okay, Gary sent or Gary uh, Craig has sent me the picture. So Dylan, let me. Uh, I'm going to be rude to everybody again, and I'm going to get out my phone, and I'm going to send him this picture. Okay. There we go. I'm I'm thinking that's what you need there. So yes, green and purple are, like you said, the uh, the neutral safety, and the pink and the red, or pink and green, are the reverse lights. So yeah, there we go. And then if you're looking at the neutral safety switch, these two tabs here are for the uh, seatbelt warning light if uh, you still have that system installed in your car. I actually still have it in my car with the buzzer and it's all wired up to the seats and it still works. Kind of, of course, I kind of have to because it's a safety item if I choose to sell the car, which will never happen, but eh, never say never, right? So Dylan, again, if you can, check your personal message. You may have to go to other messages because I don't know if we're friends or not. Craig, thank you very much for your very timely uh, entrance here to the show and providing those pictures. And, oh, look at that. Uh, an hour and 20 minutes. So that's a pretty decent show. We've had a pretty good, pretty good. Uh, pretty good evening. So besides my being rude and sending uh, Dylan pictures on the 
on the thing. Again, if you guys have questions, feel free to send me a private message if, if you don't want to post it. Um, I'll try and do my best to help you or you don't post it on the stream here and uh, somebody can help you. I mean, we got lots of knowledgeable people. Uh, I want to send a shout out to Tim Bourne. Uh, I hope I pronounced his last name right. That gentleman is very, very knowledgeable. So by all means, if you want to post a question that you need assistance with, nine times out of ten, Tim will beat me to it. And Tim is a lot smarter than I am. He, he, knows, his, he knows his stuff. And again, uh, another plug for the 7374 GM X body, which of course includes Nova, but also Omegas, Venturas, and Apollos. <coughs> because we want to have something for our corporate cousins but we didn't want to open the original site up. That's a debate we're not getting into. We've had the debate. It's been debated forever, and it's a, it's no, it's a non-issue now. All right. Oh, there's Matt. Hey, Matt, how you doing? Uh, thanks, David. Okay, I don't know what I did, but hey, you're welcome. Uh, what to do? And thanks for joining us, by the way. We've got seven people joining us right now. Again, I'm just going to plug. If you go on YouTube, Chevy Nova 73 74, that is our YouTube channel for this forum, this particular forum, where I will upload these videos after we're done. The problem is with, with the uploads is you won't get the commentary that follows and all the comments from uh, our users that uh, are making during the, the stream. I tried to, to read everything out as I can to try and get all that information out. But if you do watch it again after, if you watch it through the, the Facebook group, you are able to still reply to the chats and get the chats as you're reviewing the video. It's just on YouTube. You don't get that opportunity. Oh, okay. Thanks for great conversation. Ah. Uh, Again, Matt, I'm just winging it. I try to, uh, I go off what people are posting and just try to kind of have an open forum. Um, thank you for joining us. Of course, uh, post away, post pictures. We love pictures. I don't know what more I can say without repeating myself. Uh, again, I uh, uh, the, this forum, I love this forum. It's my favorite Nova site. I've, I've backed out of a lot of the other Nova sites more because I, I really like the 73, 74 Novas. Um, this Nova here, I, I don't know if you've caught before or ever read any of my messages, and I'm sorry to repeat it for those who may have heard it uh, a lot before. My dad bought this car new. So I grew up with this car as a kid. I used to play in it, you know, like Dukes of Hazard style, my grandpa's garage, because it went to my grandpa after my dad uh, parked it for a bit. So I used to play like Dukes of Hazard in this car and all that as a kid. And then, you know, green had to be my favorite color because the Nova's green and 73, 74 are my favorite. I remember the first time I saw a 72 Nova, my dad showed it to me and I looked at it like, that's not a Nova. It's different. It doesn't look the same because, I, oh, and I must have been about four or five years old because I didn't know, you know, front clips were different or, you know, stuff. And I still remember that so vividly, that car parked at the end of the street seeing that and my dad telling me about it. It was the same green as my Nova. In fact, I have a picture of it on my wall over there because it turns out I'm friends now with that gentleman and every now and then I bug him about selling me that car. What do I think about Eagle Crank and Rods? That's a tough one, uh, Rob, because Anything engine-related, engine part-related, I take all kinds of advice. I listen to what people say. But the gospel word of engine stuff for me is my friend Dan Clem. As you know, you've, you've talked with him. Uh, I've heard great things about Eagle rods and cranks. Uh, I myself, I'm using, I believe i got a scat crank in mine. I'm not sure what kind of rods I have. Dan Clem has built my motor. He's also a member of this group, so if you post the um, well, you know, you have Dan. Uh, just send him a message. But I, I believe uh, Eagle Crank and Rods to be to be good. Uh, the dark green of this is called uh, Midnight Green. It's uh, what color? Yeah, you know what? I can look on the bill of sale here. 
It is color code 48 Midnight Green. Midnight Green with a black hood. Now, I know you're looking at my car. This fender is a lot clearer and shinier than, you know, that fender. Reason for that being is uh, it was in the car in 97, which took out my original bumper and front right fender. That's why this fender looks so good. And that's why I parked the car like this, so you get to see the good side. But, yeah, midnight green is the factory color of this car and will always be the color of this car. Yeah. Yes, Dan Clem to me is a god. Um, and, and, you know, folks, uh, those of you who are interested in building motors, whether, you know, you're just rebuilding a 350, you're rebuilding a 355 or, you know, a 406, a 400 small block. Uh, my friend Dan Clem is on the group, and the guy is brilliant. He is an engine god. He does all my machining, all my engine work. Um, like, I've built a motor before. But Dan's really good, really knows his stuff, and his word to me is gospel, and that's who I use to get my information from. I'm pretty sure if you tag him in a question, he'll be more than happy to offer you his two cents worth. And uh, as Matt pointed out, great conversation, but yeah, it's kind of dying out here. So people, give me something to talk about here. We'll give it a couple minutes here. If not, then you know we'll call it a night. I could go huh, unpack my hockey equipment that's sitting outside that's been, well, it's been stewing in the hockey bag for at least another 90 minutes now since hockey's over. <laughs> now we're down to six viewers. So a few people have left. That's okay. I mean, don't expect everybody to sit here for 90 minutes and listen to everything. We're not always talking about interesting stuff. Sometimes it's just me uh, going on and on about nothing. Feeling silent air, awkward silence, downtime. Oh, oh, new comment. Okay, good, good. We'll keep going here. Uh, oh, yes, Craig? Add Dan, of course. Oh, how does the 406 and the Nova run? Very curious. Okay. Well, the first 406 I built for this car back in 2003, if you got time for a story, Dylan, uh, I built a, a 406. Um, it was just very low key with uh, one compression. Um, stock heads I had drilled out to 202 with uh, uh, Edelbrock. Uh, aluminum intake, and a, a 650 carb. HEI ran great. I ran about 1330 at the track where it was the best time. And it was a great motor, and I beat that motor mercifully. And later on, I had drained the oil, and when I drained the oil, the oil was full of copper, and I thought I needed engine bearings. And I thought, you know, my bearings are done. So we pull out the motor with the help of my buddy Dan Clem, and we're going through the motor, and he's laughing at me. He's like, oh, these bearings would have lasted another year or two. But to me, like I didn't know, eh? And that's where his experience comes in really handy for me. So while we had the motor out, my dad came over one evening, and he says, Dan, what would it take to run 12s? Dan says, oh, well, we could do this. We could do that. We can, you know, put aluminum heads on. We could do this, 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 and that. Well, after my dad and him talked for about 45 minutes, uh, I had to come up with eight grand uh, because uh, dad agreed to, to have Dan build this motor. And although I did a mistake in the math when we were figuring out stuff, it was supposed to be 11 and a half to one compression. It is 12 and a half, uh, 12.6 to one compression. <clears throat> Aside from what well, kind of crappy gas mileage? Wicked. I love it. I love the power. It incinerates the tires. Um, when I had the Holly 650 carb on here, I had a dyno. It was, oh, what was it? 317, 340 something torque at the rear wheels. Um, I mean, it was a bit of a pig on gas, but hey, who cares? Uh, smiles per gallon, right? And I was running 12.2 at the track with it, 12.3. A couple of years later, you know, I thought maybe I could touch 12.1 or, you know, maybe even get a high 11, right? No, I started tuning it. We started going the other way. And then I started getting plagued by problems with, uh, you know, a bad distributor. And then uh, the bad distributor 
really threw me off because it made it came across as like I was having a fuel problem. Long story short, we now have the Holly Sniper EFI fuel injection system on here. And I have the Holly Dual Sync distributor, which controls the timing. Uh, the Holly Sniper controls the timing. I have yet to run it on the track this year. I haven't been able to get it out yet. But when I had it out, the very first time I had the Sniper on the car, it was running 12.5. I've since made some adjustments to the sniper to work better with the 400 with this setup. I'm hoping to get back into the 12.2, 12.3s, but I'll be happy if it runs 12s. The key to the 400s and the downside to the 400s I've noticed is, you know, the 400s have the Siamese piston and are known to run a little hotter and you got to be careful. If you're using the stock 5.5, rods, you don't want to over rev it. You don't want to rev it high. You're looking at more of a red line around 6, 6,200. When we, I shouldn't say when we, when Dan built this motor, we went with offset pistons and the 5.7 rods from a 350. The 5.7 rods are a lot stronger of a rod. Now I don't have to worry about that low red line because the 5.7 rods can take that extra, uh, extra power, I guess you could say. Secondly, keeping them cool. Because 400s like to run a little warmer. I originally started by upgrading my rad to a four-core uh, copper rad, which is now in the Omega. I ran that in here with a 180 thermostat. Car runs about 190, 195. Runs great. Loved it. Ended up upgrading to an aluminum rad. The aluminum rad, the only difference is it kept the car cool, but the aluminum rad got a little cooler when you took off from the light, a little quicker than the copper rad, but ultimately a four-core rad, either or is key in keeping the engine cool along with an edelbrock aluminum uh, high volume water pump the edelbrock 8811 water pump is what i have also in this car hopefully i didn't bore you too much there and you got your information but again ask questions all right tonight so uh matt thanks for joining us and i uh, hope we'll catch you again again post some pictures of your car love to see it Okay, I'm going 500, 550 horse on the motor, 6 to 700 on spray. I, I think you'll be okay, Dylan, if you go with the 5.7 rods and the pistons, but this would be a question I would ask my buddy Dan Clem because, uh, well, like I said, he knows the stuff. Let's see if I can tag him in this, uh, in this chat. Maybe he can. Oh, is he? Is he even in the group? One sec here. Maybe he's, uh, I know for a while there, he was getting out of some, uh, toning down his Facebook. Well, I sure hope he didn't leave the group. Let me just check our membership list here. Okay, I've invited him back to the group, so hopefully he may see this. And, uh, okay, now let's see if I can tag him. <laughs> Maybe he has to accept before I can tag him. Well, Dylan, I'm going to add that to my list here. Uh, okay, okay. Ask Dan about 400 and NOS. Yeah, this this 400 I have in here now, uh, with the the I had I put a 750 carb on, and it only made 10 extra horse with the 750 carb. Uh, made about 323 horse, 347 at the rear wheels. I'm not a person for nitrous or power adders. I've never dabbled in that in those fields, so I can't honestly answer you there. But maybe a question to post to the general public. Uh, maybe somebody can give you a. Uh, uh, maybe somebody can give you a better answer. I, I really wish I could. But yeah, I, I'm I'm nowhere near the horsepower you're looking for. I, I mean, I mean, maybe about 450 at the crank, but um, yeah. Okay. Oh, I want to run the Stinky Pete NOS kit just for fun. <laughs> oh well, that's what the 396 is. Big block? Oh, I'm sure you could you could easily uh, you could easily put a big. I mean, you build it with the right pistons, the right parts. You could put anything together, right? So the key is 
good parts, good quality parts. Don't cheap out. I've cheaped out in the past. It is more expensive in the long run to cheap out. Spend the money now. It will save you money later on. For example, ARP bolts. Don't, I, I ended up using ProComp studs in my heads. Ended up breaking one. They're not even as long as the ARP or the same quality. Spend the money on ARP and quality parts. You'll, you'll save money in the long run. And Al is taking off. Al, good night. Uh, thanks for joining us. And let's see, we're, yeah, about an hour and 30 minutes, about 90 minutes there. So I guess uh, if there's nothing else, I'll, I'll wrap it up. But, yeah, if you have any more questions. Uh, again, I went with the 406 because I like the torque of the 400 motor. And my I originally was running a 400 in here. So I've always gone the 400 line because I like the torque of the 400. But I think the next motor, if I do build one, I may try something like a 421. Or I may go with a 383 stroker. I mean, you, you can build crazy power in 383s as well. Really, you got the money, you can build anything. But I know my old 406, I, I ended up putting a new set of bearings in it. Um, it's ready to go. Just got to, you know, set, uh, set it up. And I'm probably saving that motor for uh, the Omega when uh, that 355 ends up, I guess, you know, calling it a day. I have over 300 passes on that motor. Doesn't even use oil. That car runs like a dream, knock on wood. But if, if something should happen, that's why I have this other 400. Or heaven forbid something happens to this motor and, you know, I need to throw something in the car just to get it mobile until I can afford to rebuild it, I'll put it back in the Nova. But, yeah, I, lo I love my, uh, my 400s. And it looks like Greg's taken off. So, Greg, uh, thanks again for helping us out with that wiring really quick. Key timing and joining us. Uh, Greg is also very knowledgeable on Ols Omegas. Uh, gave him a little bit of a questions too for Ols Omegas. And he's very active on our sister site as well. So, I guess you know, if everybody's calling it a night, oh, do a 434 there in St. Had a friend named Troy who had one split bumper ran 920s with a little spray. Yeah, it's something to look into. I mean, if I get the money down the road, uh, we'll look into something like that. Or see, you know, what there is for crate motors out there. I know there's a 454 small block motor that, uh, what is it? Who makes that motor now? And I thought a 454 small block would look would look pretty cool. So who knows? Uh, there's, there's so many options out there. And I guess it depends where I am financially at the time too. Like right now I couldn't afford to do a motor, but you know, you always find money when you need money for car parts, right? And you got to keep the car going. You, you find ways to find money. But you know what? I guess, uh, I guess I'm going to wrap that up folks. And then uh, we'll upload this video to the YouTube uh, Chevy Nova 73-74 page. If you can subscribe, I'm not going to beg for uh, you know people to subscribe in that. But if we can get 100 people to subscribe, I can get a custom URL, which I would name the same as our forum, Chevy Nova 73-74. So that's with, that's with 100 users. So just a kind of a shameless plug there, but yeah. So, folks, thanks for joining us. I'm going to aim for Tuesday again next week. I don't want to give you a time because I don't know what's happening with my hockey. It all depends. We play finals on Thursday. If we lose, game two of the finals is on Tuesday. Yet. So I don't want to promise and then end up like a situation like tonight where I was an hour and a half late because I, I feel really bad for that. I, I don't like being late. I don't like when I'm not prompt. So. Other than that, I guess uh, end it the same way I always do. Smoke tires, not drugs. And uh, we'll see you soon on Chevy Nova 7374 Nova Show. Have a good night.